Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. There can be no denying that the so-called vinyl revival is a real thing. In the past 11 months, vinyl sales have continued to outpace CD sales, with over 19 million units sold. The market has also grown by over 100%. And that's not an anomaly. It's a full-blown embrace of the old. Now, for those of us who have enjoyed listening to vinyl, buying or upgrading turntables, and reading liner notes, it feels good to know that the format we love appears to be here to stay. It also shows no signs of slowing down, at least not when it comes to demand. Manufacturing those records and keeping up with demand is another thing. The state of the industry isn't what it used to be. The technology, though, is exactly what it used to be. And that's not essentially a good thing especially when it comes to the environment. Pressing plants still require steam to power the presses. Fossil fuels produce that steam. The presses themselves are decades old. And the records that pile up next to those machines are put in covers, shrink-wrapped in plastic, and shipped around the country by trucks. The same process and distribution model that went into producing pet sounds by the Beach Boys is the exact same one that puts Harry Styles' fine line in the hands of excited fans. The truth is, the vinyl record I put on my turntable last night isn't great for the environment. I set aside everything I said about what went into producing it. The actual physical thing itself isn't environmentally friendly. It's composed of PVC. It's a plastic that lends itself well to the medium. It's easy to work with and its ability to produce or reproduce a warm, clean sound is beyond compare. But, and there's always a but, toss it in a landfill and it will take a thousand years to decompose. The reason it's in that landfill is that it's not recyclable. You can thank the chloride in its name for that. Chloride is toxic. So is the vinyl revival of poisoned pill? Now, does it make more sense to go back to our phones and our streaming services? That has to be more sustainable and better, right? Well, not so fast. Streaming music might seem to be the answer. You have virtually every piece of music ever produced at your fingertips. It's only a scroll and a click away. There's no physical media to worry about or landfill to contribute to. Well, I have to be the bearer of bad news here. I read recently that if you stream your favorite album 27 times, the carbon footprint created exceeds the same record in vinyl format. Don't believe it? Well, the infrastructure behind that streaming service is enormous. That endless library of music has to be stored somewhere, and that somewhere is servers, a lot of servers. Data centers around the world are busting at the seams with rows upon rows of servers ready to stream you the latest Billie Eilish song. Those servers require power. Power means emissions. And then there's the method of delivery, your smartphone. I can't imagine the carbon footprint its production leaves. You have to factor that into the equation. And where do you think a lot of these phones end up when a new model comes out a couple years later? Or those servers that store the music when they need to be upgraded? Yeah, they go to landfills. I've personally gone through many phones. I don't always upgrade every time a new version comes out, but I'm pretty consistent in doing so every other model. And that usually means every two years. Then there are the Bluetooth speakers I stream to or the earbuds I use. All are part of the process and need to be manufactured. The copy of Black Sabbath's Mob Rules I bought in 1982, I bought only once. I'm still listening to it 40 years later. When I'm gone, my collection will pass on to my children, maybe even their children. It's not far-fetched to think so. Some records in my collection belonged to my dad, and I'm pretty sure a couple of them were my grandmother's. That's generations of ownership. Those records are not about to make their way to a landfill anytime soon, or ever. It's somewhat exhausting. There are valid arguments on both sides, and in the middle is our beautifully made vinyl disc. The question here is, can we make it better? Well, it's possible. There's nothing that says we have to do it the same way we've done so for the last 70 plus years. We can improve the process. Better, more efficient pressing machines are one way to start. Moving away from 180 gram records is another. I know, I love to hold a heavier record too,
but I can't always be selfish. The good news is this isn't just a dream. There are folks out there looking for ways to improve the manufacturing process and bring it into the 21st century in some unique ways. There's a Dutch project called Green Vinyl looking to replace pressing machines with injection molding. Doing so requires much less energy, perhaps as much as 60 to 70 percent. Then there's Viral Technologies. This Canadian-based company is looking at modernizing the machines. While it still requires pressing records, their innovations do so using modern computing technologies and badly needed upgrades. Talk about modernizing the process. Another company, Rebeat, is also reimagining the entire approach from start to finish. They are looking at laser etching a digital source file into a ceramic plate. They claim it produces better sound or has a better sound reproduction by putting it closer to the original source than the traditional nickel stamper used to press records. Ceramic also avoids the whole nickel plating process used to create the stamper. They call the vinyl records they produce or that it will produce high definition and plan to put this all into production soon. It's all good stuff. And it all speaks to the fact that vinyl, at least as far as I can tell, is here to stay. Now, if you enjoy vinyl records as much as I do, feel free to subscribe. And if you would like to know when new episodes are released, also click the little bell icon. And until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.